We're sizing conductors from Chapter 18 in Stalkup's uh, Electrical Design Book, Volume 2. Now, the basic rule uh, is outlined in 430.6a as an Apple 1 and 430.22 in the NEC. Always suggest users uh, of the code to first uh, go to the table of contents around page four of the NEC and the subject uh, here is motors uh, and of course article 430 deals with motors so you just uh, get in article 430 in the table of contents uh, and scroll down to uh, part two uh, sizing branch circuit conductors and it uh, the table of contents will uh, send the user uh, over to part two in the NEC of article 430 and then you just scroll down till you see and come up on section 430.22 which is probably about the second uh, section down from part two and then of course 430.6a of the code instructs the user to uh, go and for single phase motors, for example, go to table 430.248 and pick up uh, the single phase full load currents of the motor. And then, uh, course, 430.6A1 says these are the full load currents that size every element of the motor except the overload protection, which we'll find is the nameplate and 430. Uh, dot six a two which we will look at later but based upon the information just given let's look at figure 18-1 uh, in chapter 18 of Stockup's electrical design book volume 2 and let's just pick up on the uh, bottom motor listed in the uh, figure 18-1 and it's a single phase motor it's one horse 115 volt rated and it's supplied by 120 volt circuit now we have THWN copper conductors referenced to be used and then we have three sections referenced and a table there we have 430.22 which is the 125 percent rule just mentioned but the golden rule that all uh, designers of motor circuits and installers use first is 314, or excuse me, 310.14A3, informational note two. And some designers call that uh, item two. And then after the calculation of 125% times the full load current rating selected from table uh, 430.248, that full load current rating after the math has been performed, we use that total uh, amp rating to go to table 310.16 and select our conductors. Now, reviewing the illustration, to the right, we have the single phase motor. It's a one horse. So step one, we have to find the full load current rating of the motor, section 430.6A1, refers us to table 430.248 and the one horse under the 115 volt uh, uh, column lists 16 amps so step two then we could go to table 220.3 and we have the same reference that we picked up in the table of contents there and our table 220.3 which is a reference to certain sections based upon the type of equipment or load you're dealing with to give you the percentage that would be used to, uh, to determine what the full load amps would be or uh, the full amps uh, of any particular piece of equipment. And notice it's uh, 125%. When we follow the uh, references of 220.3, that table, over to 430.22 in part two, we pick up the 125% rule times the step one full load current of 16 amps. We come up with 20 amps. Now, step three is selecting the conductors. 
and we would reference 310.14a3 again and look at the informational note 2 or item 2 which we use as the golden rule to determine any load. Now uh, in reference to table 310.16 20 amps requires number 14 but we have a restriction that we have to look at and if we went uh, and applied the solution then the number uh, 14 THWN copper conductors would be required uh, according to the asterisks in um, the 2017 edition but it's the notes in the 2020 edition and 240.4D would require it to be a, a 20 amp circuit uh, on a 20 amp overcurrent device if that would allow the motor to start and run but right now we're not reviewing the size of the overcurrent device uh, to allow the motor to start and run all we're reviewing here how do we select the conductors to supply the motor uh, from the overcurrent device in the panel uh, ahead of the conductors routed through the raceway to the motor. So that's what this figure 18-1 is illustrating sizing conductors for single phase mo excuse me single phase motors in conjunction with the rules of NEC 430.22. Now uh, that's basically uh, how we would size the conductors at 125% of the full load current of the motor and we reviewed how we would select that full load current, not the nameplate on the motor, but the uh, full load current from our table 430.248 uh, is instructed by 430.6A1. Now a rule of thumb sometimes an electrician will take that uh, 16 amps that we see there and just round it up to even unit number of 10 so they'd round it up to 20 times 125 percent and size the conductor and uh, it might be a little larger but the thing about it is you know it's going to uh, supply uh, the amount of amps needed and the size of the conductors needed to drive the motor and the load. So that's a rule of thumb and a lot of times inspectors would use it, uh, electricians would use it instead of actually going through these steps that we're showing you uh, in the figure 18-1.